I am so mad that I moved into the country because if I hadn't moved into the country, I would be experiencing this cyberpunk dystopia that is going on in the rest of the world. I am very sad that all of the rest of you are being constantly monitored everywhere. Here's what I read about, and this drives me nuts that this is happening. iPhone, or Apple, whatever, Apple pushed this iPhone update where they put a contact tracer openly on all their phones. Now, of course, they probably had something like this already. I mean, if you're running an iPhone, you're running proprietary software, you have no idea the kind of stuff that they have on your phone. But in addition, you know, to having a phone that has, you know, GPS monitoring of your location, you know, monitoring every website you connect to, all that kind of stuff. Now they have a contact tracer, meaning this thing, it's a Bluetooth thing, and whenever you get close to another phone, it will log that you've been close to this phone. Now, of course, the rationalization for this thing, for this thing that now monitors every single person you come in contact with, even indirectly, and how long you've been in contact with them, um, the, the rationalization for this thing is, of course, you know, the Corona Chan thing, which I think, uh, nor even normies out there are getting tired of this. I don't, no one even believes in it anymore. No one is, it's just over. I, I don't know why they're even pushing this stuff. But now, you know, now they are, they just openly have things on your phone. They don't even have shame about it because of this stuff. They don't even try and hide it that now your phone, we are logging every single person you have indirect contact with. Okay. Now here's what's happening in the United States. And this of course is happening in other countries as well. But in the U.S., I, you can't even make this. This is why it's like a hilarious cyberpunk dystopia. There is house resolution Six, 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 six. You can't, you can't make this up. You literally can't. Called the Trace Act, which gives them the ability basically to monitor your location and come to your house and check you for, you know, oh, you got a cough? Well, uh-oh, we, we might have to take measures to prevent you from spreading it to other people. You cannot make this up. You just can't. I mean, so now they openly have the ability to monitor your phones, everyone you have in contact with, and they have the supposed legal authority to come to your house, knock on your door, check you for coronavirus. It's just nuts. It's just nuts. I don't know why normies are not in the streets. Now, here's what I want to talk about in this video, because there's a wider point, okay? A lot of you people out there have just been sitting, I mean, and a lot of people who watch my channel, who, I don't know, maybe are new to free software or something like that, or security or something like that, they sit there and they passively take it because they don't realize that, I mean, th there's an alternative. They just think, okay, well, you know, uh, Apple's going to put this, force this app on my phone. I don't have a choice in that. Uh, you know, Windows is just going to install all this monitoring software on my computer. That's I just have to deal with that. The government is going to have, uh, you know, the, the NSA is going to openly monitor everything you do. Uh, there's just no way that you can be safe on the internet, blah, blah, blah. That's a cope. That's a cope because there's an alternative to this. Now, one thing about people in the free software movement is that people have been, who have been around it for a while will know that Richard Stallman has been right about literally everything, 100% of the things that he said. In fact, nowadays, basically, Alex Jones is 100% right on everything he said. But uh, Richard Stallman has been 100% right because since the beginning, he said this, okay? If you're going to use proprietary software, if you're going to use it on your computer, if you're going to use it on your phone, anywhere else, even YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, you need to understand that 100% of that is monitored, and anything you put up there is uh, because merely the, the fact that a software developer is, you know, writing code that you cannot see what it's actually doing. It is always going to be liable to manipulate you no matter what. My phone's about to fall. It doesn't matter if you trust developers. It doesn't matter if it seems like, uh, you know, they're nice guys or something like that. The potentiality is always there. And it's not just, you know, it's not just the thing of, oh, well... Uh, here, here's an example, okay? Uh, there's a browser. I'm not allowed to criticize it on this site. I'll just say it rhymes with uh, Noodle Dome, okay? There's a browser out like... Last time I criticized this browser, my video got shadow banned. It was so stupid. But um, anyway, there's a browser out there that touts itself as being mostly free software. Mostly free software. Which means you can monitor most of the code. You can see most of what's going on. Wow, that's very nice. 
but using software that's mostly free software is sort of like, it's like saying, oh, here's my girlfriend. She's 95% AIDS free, okay? Is that a, would you, would you be with a girl who's 95% AIDS free, 95% gonorrhea free? Is that a good deal? And the same thing goes with software. It only takes one line of code to manipulate you, to take data from you, take your passwords, take your GPS location, take everything about you. It take, it is so easy to do with proprietary software. And I know that the rationalization, I mean, it used to be that people are like, oh, well, we have to have proprietary software uh, because, you know, otherwise people wouldn't write it. They need some monetary incentive for it. Well, now you have entire free software operating systems that get along fine. I mean, there are people like me and most of the people who watch my channel who basically only use free software on their computers. Um, so that that's not really a good argument. But the real draw of proprietary software is especially nowadays is it's so great for monitoring people because you can do anything with it and people have gotten so complacent so what happens is that people just assume that the, the default the thing that you just have to accept is you're just always going to be monitored you're oh I, just, I have to use noodle dome because uh, I don't know, it's just the best browser and you're just going to be monitored anyway and yeah, there are some things, I mean, let's say, uh, you know, there are some internet connections. Uh, even if I send someone an encrypted email, it's possible to detect that traffic, right? But sending an encrypted email still keeps my information safe. What we're talking about is still safe. And there's no way to get across that. Uh, say if you are using services that are free software and every all their internet connections are you know encrypted and secure and stuff like that you are safe like there is no way of getting across from that but if you have any break in that chain one example I've talked about recently is uh, the software service telegram telegram and a lot of I did a video on this and a lot of people were very upset because a lot of people use telegram under the auspices that it is a secure messaging application it is not it is not at all uh, it is it even happens to be free the client side application is free software but the server side application is not we don't know what it's doing and telegram openly says that even you know um, well for most messages for all group chats and all default messages, they have the, debil the ability to decrypt that information. So it's just as well as if you were just giving it all to Google. The only thing is people have this cope, oh, well, I trust Telegram. Oh, they seem like good guys. They've only shared some of the information that they have, not all of it, stuff like that. This is the cope that people have. And if you, in the free, so you know, from a perspective of free software, from a perspe perspective of privacy and security, it should be, no, the chain has to be, you don't wanna have to rely on them. You don't wanna have to trust them as individuals. You wanna be able to use software that is, ne you know, if, if you have something private to say, it's always going to be going to be private. There's no question about it. Um, so in the case of cell phones, right? So iPhone has forced this update. Now the sad fact about cell phones, people will ask me about cell phones and I've done passive aggressive videos on them because as it is right now, there's basically, I mean, outside of some really speculative products out there, there's basically no such thing as a secure phone. Even phones that run 100% free software, they're still pretty easy to monitor. Uh, I mean, even of course your, your cell provider is gonna have the ability to monitor the stuff you do. Now that's not, I'm not, I'm not making perfect the enemy of the good. Uh, there are always steps that you can take. You can always, you know, use free or software on your phone. You can always stay away from Google and Amazon, these kind of massive uh, companies that, that offer these monitoring. Really, they don't offer you a product. They offer you as a product. I mean, that, that's, that's the different with a lot of, difference with a lot of these software as a service kind of things. So anyway, the thing, it's, it's just nuts to me, the kind of thing that, things that people will put up with nowadays. Like they are just openly monitoring people. And you know what? They have been for a long time. I remember when the Snowden stuff came out, uh, you know, what is it like, man, what has that been like five, five years or something? It's been more than that. I don't know. It's crazy. But you know, there was one week where people were like, oh, well, the government's never going to monitor us. It do they don't actually care about that. And then all the Snowden came out, Snowden stuff came out about the NSA literally just doing that, having profiles of everyone monitoring basically all internet connections that they can monitor. And then people go to the state of complacency where they're just like, 
well, of course they were going to do that. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. And the, the fact of the matter is you can escape that. You might not be able to escape it 100%, but you can always make steps to make your digital life more secure. And now it's getting to the point where people have these Bluetooth apps where you're not just undermining your own security, you're undermining other people's security. You're, uh, you know, if you have facial recognition software, you know, on your smart TV, you're jeopardizing everyone. And right now, here's the thing. Here's what people are saying. Here's the cope. Oh, God, I, I'm sure that there are people who have already turned off the video because they've already put this cope in the comment section. But they'll say stuff like this. Well, why do they care? It doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. They're not going to, they don't care what, about what individual people are doing. But here's what's happening. They are making profiles of everyone openly and you'll, you'll you can read articles like this online we have so much metadata on everyone we just don't know what to do with it and all of that information out there is a permanent liability of everyone of literally everyone we don't even know what they're going to be able to do and that that's exactly your what your mindset should be it's not that they've done bad things to us okay it's in the same things with propri it's the same thing with proprietary software same principle look at it in terms of potentials to harm it's not that they've done a google has done a bad thing to me yet it's that google now has a share of power over my life and everyone else's that is massive we don't even know the kind of neural net technologies the kind of the kind of ai they're going to develop what you could actually do with this kind of stuff so at every point in time i mean this is not tinfoil stuff this is stuff that's out in the open just abstain from everything you can don't participate in what you can if you have a cell phone do what i do and keep it at home all day just use it as a house phone use it you know if you need to use some two-factor authentication thing actually i need to figure out two-factor authentication on my computer if anyone knows how to send and receive no, you know, stuff like text messages just from a computer, not even having a phone. Tell me, I'd like to know that. But um, anyway, so that's it. I'm not again. I'm not saying to make the make perfect the enemy of the good. There are always things that everyone can do to improve their privacy and security. And you should never say, "Oh, well, it's I'm just going to give up." Okay, that's a stupid thing to do. Install GNU slash Linux or install another free operating system. Uh, don't use your cell phone. Uh, if you do use a cell phone, use free software applications. If you use Linux, use free software applications. Uh, yeah, that, that should be basic stuff. That should be the things you should be teaching your kids nowadays. We don't know how bad it's going to be when, when they're going to be our age. So just, yeah, that's it.